strive to make every product detail perfect. Hello everyone, we are here with the State of Legends Queensland Trials for Dev 1. Um, we now have our game nearly underway here. Uh, we have Team 1 versus Team 2. So the idea behind the trials here, we've got a mix of Griffith, QT and the Queens University of Queensland players. And uh, we are having them go head to head to uh, determine our Queensland Div 1 squad. So we have our other streams going as well. We have Div 2 and we have Div 3 running on their respective streams. Uh, but this stream here will be Div 1 exclusively. So we've got an interesting, uh, interesting first game for ourselves here. A lot of these players are well known to each other. They, uh, they've been versing each other for quite some time. So they mostly know each other inside and out, but we do have some new players in the mix as well. Um, we have Mentalman is uh, relatively new to the scene, so he has opted for Malphite in this game. We'll have to see what he can do. Uh, that is the Chad pick. I'm quite a fan of the Chad top laners picking Malphite. The, the no ego players, I like to see it. Uh, but we are nearly about to get into our game here. We have seen some of the other divisions already playing. Um, some interesting stuff we have seen uh, in Div 3, I believe, currently. We have a knock-up comp, uh, press R wombo combo. And um, I'm a big fan of those comps. They're pretty spicy to see, so you can chuck that stream on in the background as well. Have a little look. But... Uh, yeah, I have I've yet to seen that. There's a mat. There's a I think four knockups and a and a Yasso in that team, so could be pretty spicy. But uh, yeah, that's Div three and Div two. Also, we have uh, Carnaby from Griffith, one of the coaches. He is streaming uh, the games. If you want to chuck that on as well, have the multiple tab system running. Um, but yeah, their games they're on game two currently. Uh, we do have. A round robin system for Div 1 and Div 2 here. Uh, Div 3 is the best of three format though. So, going to have three games total for the players to show their worth, show their skill, um, and see who's going to face New South Wales in two weeks to come. But we are just working out the production. Uh, operation at the moment I, th I believe we just need to click forward on the timeline and then yeah there we go all right we're loading in right now so I'll go over the team comps with us all once we get into it um, some interesting team comps as well I do like what I'm seeing Awesome, so we have here... We have here a, uh, what has become sort of meta team comps at the moment. Um, outside of the Malphite pick, you see a lot of these champions, uh, also outside of the Jax as well, but for the most part, these uh, champions from jungle to support are very common in pro play at the moment, so uh, the Div 1 players definitely Taking meta reads and uh, picking what works best. We have Mero here getting a nice catch. This move does get knocked off. He's going to get taken down here, actually. Some nice work by Rusty to try and keep him alive. But actually, Rusty is all on their lonesome now. The slow comes in, but he's going to be able to jump to that other player. No, the movement speed comes out. Kick Kangaroo doesn't offer the flash. Um, and that is not good there from, uh, from Team 2. Nice little root, cheeky root from Miro. We do have Eastsmith coming back in, potentially looking for the steal on his buff here. Malphite looking to assist as well. But they are going to get bullied off. So, unfortunate start for uh, Team 2 there. 
Easy Smurf is uh, currently sick with COVID at the moment, so is playing at a little bit of a disadvantage. Uh, some of the communication you might have seen there uh, coming out to play. But uh, we do here, interestingly, Zookeeper goes for enemy red into enemy blue. It's looking like the armor jungle here goes straight for the throat, as uh, he knows Easy Smurf is going to be quite low. And uh, without a red buff here, we do see Easy Smurf getting some assistance. Doesn't actually get his blue buff. He's getting bullied off of it again. We have FDR rotating mid from mid though. Wave is not in the best state. And they're going to have to give this as well. That is devastating. Um, see Team 1 here is just looking to constrict them as much as possible. Sort of snowball this uh, this unfortunate early game start here. Easy Smurf has yet to get a camp. He is getting his walls at the moment, but um, yeah, you're not going to be happy camper with that. You see, up in the top lane here, it's just going to be a wet noodle fight for the most part, uh, especially as Malphite gets some more of that armor there. Not much happening, but Kip Kangaroo is putting on the hurt. We see also mid, Miro just looking to get Cryo with the Seraphine. FTR not opting for the Ignite, so not going for, uh, going for the kills. We see an early reset here from uh, Soy and Kane. Getting a nice base time as they do have the push in this matchup. We're going to see here also uh, Rusty will not have as much agency as Kane does. Uh, as the nature of being a Yumi, so they'll have the, the favor of uh, scaling Paranoid and Rusty here, but um, in the early game you are going to see Kane with a little bit more agency to make these players, so might be seeing him roam. We do have a Solico actually in the top lane. The Solico or a dive, I believe, and this is just Team 1 putting on the pressure from that early ga game uh, kill there. Investment falls down, flashes, but a uh, nice turret juggling there from Zookeeper. And they do get uh, another kill on their wall. But that is definitely, uh, that is not good news for Team 2 here. Starting to get snowballed on, you can see just one little kill in the early game. And, uh, suddenly it's just snowballed into what is now leading up to a potential 2k gold deficit. Easy Smurf has clawed back uh, some of that CS, but um, that is likely because he has taken from So, not pressing the middle in the gold charts more or less. We do have Soy and K maintain that prize, so they're going to look to um, actually get a bit of deeper vision here as Soy is going for a, a ward on the enemy jungle to keep tracking uh, Easy Smurf. Easy Smurf looking for a desperation gank bot. Doesn't have any camps up, but um, he is potentially going to look for Dragon here as that's all they really have left to do outside of uh, counter jungling, but not going to be too favorable with that. But without the pry from bot lane, uh, they're not really going to be able to contest this dragon here. Uh, taking themselves out. Soy and Kane just keeping them uh, under charge for the most part, but we do see them actually start to let this wave push back a little bit. They want to maybe pull jungle here and freeze the wave potentially. Let's see where they are pushing it again. Looking now actually to swap into a invade on the counter junglers. Kane is looking to uh, move here with Zookeeper. Easy Smurf is going to get out of there. Paranoid coming in as well. Zookeeper opting for the Gromp, whereas uh, Kane potentially looking for a kill there. And there is another solo kill, but Zookeeper goes in, gets exhausted immediately. The Yumi doing a lot of work here. Zookeeper flashes away. Might be getting run down. FTR without another ult charge. Does flash. And they are going to get the kill. FDR gets a first kill 14-2. Easy Smurf is looking to keep running them down, but they haven't got too much. The Yumi, though, providing so much value here. Just 
my cannons onto uh, Krug, onto the uh, uh, Scuttle there though, keep him a bit healthy. And nice work, that is definitely what Team 2 needed here, uh, catching Zookeeper out there. And the game a little bit back here, Mirror just misses out on cancelling FTR's base up. Wouldn't have had enough damage to kill, but um, it definitely would have been huge in terms of tempo. We did see Mirror not being um, first to play that, I think he facing, and uh, FTR did provide the mana then. As team one maybe a little bit ambitious in that um, that counter jungling the potentially could have just looked for the grump and backed off. We see once again Soy and uh, Kane with uh, the advantageous back time as Paranoid really not in the best spot here. That is going to start to slow push back into the enemy. Um, and we are most likely also going to see Zookeeper pathing down bot, so that could be huge here for them. I am going to just see if we can get that kill. We have a solo kill on to the Boy, we can quickly uh, grab that. Kip Kangaroo showing his value here on the Jax pick and uh, making use of where he can in the early game where he has the potential to get the game before Mentalman will really start to stack that uh, armor and yeah we just see just a nice solo kill here as Mentalman is trying to get this wave shoved in the tank keeping the wave in a dangerous buffer and Flash comes in there uh, special just nice clean wave management there and punishing uh, punishing the enemy for it. We are just going to come back up to speed here. We had them... Uh, Team 2 not actually going for the dragon there, although winning that fight is a bit too risky with um, with the mana pulls and, and health of their team there. We'll see if uh, Soy and Kane do anything with the agency they have here. Kane does have prior, does have the agency to make plays happen right now uh, and it's just going to use it to get Pro in the mid lane helps Miro push this out and potentially look for the Herald here as they do have Pro in mid and top at the moment but Miro without any mana could see FTR come to this play but um, looks like Easy Smurf is just opting away for it just pathing down bot side potentially looking to punish Soy as we do see, Kane is still topside. Um, Easy Smurf a little bit off timer with this wave though, then they won't be able to die. Crucially, also we see Kip Kangaroo 22 CS up on uh, Mentalman here. So, got two kills secured in his pocket as well as, uh, as, well as that CS advantage. We do see that's amounted to a 1k goal difference. That is uh, half of their lead at the moment in that play in the top lane. But they do go for the um, dragon here. Trade of Rift Herald for dragon. Nicely acknowledged um, by the side of Team 2. Definitely don't want to be trading that Rift Herald for nothing on the other side of the map. So Good work from them to make sure that they're, um, they're not bleeding too much. But uh, that is going to be Team 1 using this Herald to keep snowballing their gold advantage here. Zookeeper most likely going to be using this for either uh, mid or bot turret here. Going to crack open the plates. And we see the same pattern as before. Looking to strangle out um, Easy Smurf in this jungle, but Team 2 clearing out the vision there. FTR hunting, looking for a an out of position uh, mirror, out of position zookeeper, clearing some wards as well. It's important to do this pixel rush is uh, very key to river control here. Can sometimes be overlooked. We see Paranoid and Rusty are going to have pro in that bot lane. While Soy is walking back, but um, due to not really with any potential plays. We have some pings actually. 
but um, no jungle proximity at the moment, so I'm just going to go for that base there. We have actually Easy Smurf quite close to the top lane here. And low health Kip Kangaroo, but he is just going to base here. Knows that it could be a potential threat timer. Easy Smurf just looking to catch up in the jungle as much as he can. He's done a good job. He's on par in levels despite this uh, this early game. I'm not sure who's responsible for this, but that's a quite a villainous pink ward we've got there on our hands. We see bot lane control still is in the hands of Soy and Kane as it should be in this matchup. Uh, Jinx just with so much pushing power here. Also Zeri, Yumi definitely not the uh, not the early game champions. But we can see if they are able to scale into this game freely um, without much punish from Soy and Kane, then might be uh, might be in Team 2's favor. But we have seen that the prior they've uh, been able to gain from Team 1 has been pretty key in getting some of these advantages so far. So it doesn't always come just strictly from the 2v2 matchup. We see actually Easy Smurf going for an invade here. Soy is all on his lonesome. We have a solo kill in the top lane. Or rather, I keep calling it solo kills, but actually it's just another dive. Kip Kangaroo and Zookeeper working well together to just keep this pressure on Mentalman. Uh, making it work like clockwork here. Zookeeper, similar to last time, just keeps the uh, turret jagg auto juggled rather nicely. Easy Smurf going in, but... Um, Team without the wave there, so he does actually have to flash. Easy Smurf putting on the pressure here. And the root does come down from Zeri. That's going to be uh, Soy falling down. Nice flash from Paranoid to get out of the knockup there. As Miro is coming down, does have the potential to ult here, but are they going to be able to get much done? Paranoid key uh, dodge there from the charm. As they are just smashing down this top turret here. Um, we can see a very clear split of the map. Really important here as um, there's no turrets traded for red side. Uh, team 2 not getting either mid or bot despite getting those kills. Not getting the turrets is very important here um, as plates are still up. FTR came down for that play but not able to actually provide any value I believe. Um, so it doesn't get chip damage on that turret, doesn't get any plates pretty important in the scheme of things as there is a 4k gold advantage despite actually getting that play bot to work so really uh, not too good for team 2 here the gold lead still keeps surmounting as we're nearly up to a 5k gold lead at 13 minutes at the moment see team 1 has just um, used their advantages early quite well Easy Smurf doing his best to keep in this game. Uh, but um, Team 1 strangling this top side out very heavily. It's nice charm from FTR there. Gets quite a bit of damage down. But Kip Kangaroo is very, very strong at the moment. 6k in the bank. And only 4.5k comparatively on uh, FTR. Can't really effectively trade, unfortunately. Does have the ult coming up soon. Might be able to actually defend the turret now but Kip Kangaroo gonna keep the pressure on as we see Paranoid is gonna get knocked up here the ult comes through from Rusty as a Kane potentially caught out three man ult from Mentalman is it gonna be enough we see Zookeeper come in with the uh, chain CC from Miro there and that is gonna be a potential team fight wipe as we do have the TP come from Kip Kangaroo as well And that is a huge team fight for them. That just accelerates the gold lead even further. We're going to see uh, Soy actually just take the dragon on his own. Or with Zookeeper, rather. And Kip Kangaroo on the other side of the map is just going to go for a free Rift Herald. Kane finds that mischievous pink ward. Going <laughs> to clean that one up. We see Chirp, OZ, and Chat has redeemed their grumpy grapes. Do you have Kane looking for a potential play mid? 
FTR does get rooted here. Kang gonna come in. The flash comes out from FTR there. A nice cheeky little play there from Miro and Kane. Showing the UQ synergy. And that was um that was potentially their last last way back in this game for Team 2 there. We saw that fight was not too bad, but Zookeeper turning it around with that engage uh on the back line. Chain CCing with Miro's ult on Seraphine there and able to just one shot Paranoid. Taking out a big source of their damage. As we see Easy Smurf here looking to actually go for Kip Kangaroo. This is a nice cheeky little play. We're going to see Kip Kangaroo potentially fall down. Does still have the flash though. And he is way too tanky. He is way too healthy. We see Kane coming in though. Nice look onto the side lane here. Ults a little bit preemptively though. Does dissuade any more engage. Kip Kangaroo doesn't have to burn the flash which is key. Whereas Easy Smurf does have to blow that ghost there. Paranoid also doing so, so trade of summoners without um, gaining much, just really gaining the just gaining the uh, Rakan ult there. We have Zookeeper keeping up the pressure on this side lane here. Ventman in trouble here. He does have the ult, but um, oh, does dodge Miro's ult on the Seraphine, but Zookeeper just going to follow up. Able to get that kill there. Does have to trade flash for flash. You can see Team 1 has taken full control of this top side here. We see Paranoid come in onto Soy here. Put out of position on this mid wave. Kane has to blow flash. Doesn't have the ult from that bot lane play anymore. We see Easy Smurf actually going for the kill here. And that is going to be them getting a trade back as... Um, Top side of the map is going over to Team 1, but Zookeeper comes in here. Paranoid actually flies over the edge. Zookeeper without flash can't follow up anymore. And we see Miro also without ult. They are going to actually back off here. We do have the Yumi come in. Paranoid is going to fall down. Zookeeper hunts him down there. We have another Herald. Kip Kangaroo using that Herald that he grabbed before to just keep this side lane pressure up. Chirp says a bit too late. The jump on top. Yeah, look, this is um This is looking a little bit doomed for Team 2 here. They're making some plays trying to get back into this game, but the advantage that Team 1 has here, it is quite hard to uh, surpass this. Kane looking to get a little bit more control of the enemy. They do have Easy Smurf completely warded out here. Paranoid looking to clear this wave. They might pull the trigger here, Team 1. We'll have to see. Paranoid does still have flash. We see Mentalman looking for a flank, but sort of just caught out of position. The speed from uh, Mentalman's Q there does get him to safety. Burn Zookeeper's ult there. We are going to have FTR get a little bit of CS on the top side of the map here. Before Kip Kangaroo comes and um, and bullies whoever is on the side lane, whoever he finds, there's no one that can really uh, contest this man at the moment. FTR standing on a uh, ward there, might be in a little bit of trouble here. Let's go for the Krogs. Paranoid just farming up still. If uh, if Paranoid and Rusty can scale on these two picks here, this could be their way back into the game. But um, the gold lead nearly hitting 10k at the moment. A lot of that gold lead in uh, that top side of the map, like I said, we have 10k on the Jax, 8k on uh, Wukong. Still even in the mid lane though. Team 2 just looking... Uh, Team 1, rather, just looking to get control of this uh, dragon area. Keep full control of the river. Guarantee a free um, a free second drake. We do see it is Cloud Soul, so not the best for dragon stacking in uh, Team 2's uh, favor here. Might actually allow them to scale a little bit more into this game. We do see they also got that first drag, which is pretty key. But important to see... Not much can be done on that side lane. Uh, it's too hard to punish this Jack, so no plays on the other side of the map. 
All they can really do is just farm up and hope for the best at the moment. It's going to have to be some very, very cheeky picks coming in from Team 2, you would imagine. Um, to try and just stop them from accelerating this game, really. They can't get too much done with the picks, but um, if they can just allow the uh, Zeri and the Yumi to scale up, maybe this can be their agency uh, for this game. So we have Kane, as he loves to do, hiding in that river bush, um, acting as the human ward and keeping control of this area. As next objective that is up is this Baron, and that will be the way to keep this game accelerating 14-1 here as we see FTR and Easy Smurf really pushed up here going for the turret but a little bit ambitious we see Kane engaging uh, is going to lock down FTR here and no amount of Ari ults is going to save you from that one that's going to guarantee a free Baron there FTR and Easy Smurf a little bit too out of position there without much uh, vision in the river but we do see Kip Kangaroo is going to potentially give over huge gold. Oh no! The Malphite autos the uh, Jacks and steals that insane shutdown away. That might be the nail in the coffin there. That is pretty devastating. You would imagine the only way that they're going to win this game, uh, Team 2, is this Seri becoming Exodia. But uh, going to be hard to see now. Team 1, we'll have to see how they use this, um, use this Baron here. Zookeeper Kip Kangaroo in action. The, uh, the QT duo is putting in work here. Zookeeper, you put quite a bit of pressure on this, uh, game. As we see... Not really much agency for Team 2. See Easy Smurf hiding in this side lane for a potential pick. Um, maybe looking to catch Miro, but it does mean that he's going to be away from the play here. So it's free turrets for the side of Team 1. You can see FTR does absolutely no damage uh, to the enemy, unfortunately. Jax is a little bit too tanky. Does have his um, does have his wits end completed as well, as well as that frozen heart. We do see uh, frozen heart coming in a fair bit from Jax's. I know Jenny Ruby Jane in uh, UQ Div Two is a fan of that build. We see the pressure just keep coming on. They're pretty confident they can end this game. They're going for the double in hib uh, push here. Keep it keep up as much pressure as possible. You wouldn't usually see both of these um, inhibs taken unless the team thought that they could end pretty convincingly soon. Team 1 does back in a pocket of vision. Doesn't look for the engage. Could have been a cheeky little play. But goes for the safe play here. Doesn't need to rush things. They have the uh, 11k gold advantage at the moment. This is definitely not looking too good for red. The uh, gold lead has kept snowballing here, and we are seeing it sort of reach its climax. Some uh, some wards scattered across Red Side's jungle here does uh, spot out any potential catches. See Paranoid looking to farm up these supers as much as possible. If he is able to uh, keep the farm coming, keep scaling, maybe they can have some miracle team fight. But um, it is going to be pretty hard. We see blue team, we see team 1 going for this top turret here. Don't have Baron anymore, but um, they do have the double supers in bot and mid. So they're going to be able to apply the pressure still. No one actually on the top wave, so... They're more interested in getting this third drag. You'd think they could actually just end the game, but um, they want to take the safe play here. It is an interesting play, though. 
you are allowing the enemy to scale up a little bit, but they're pretty confident. They probably know that uh, this goal lead is up in the 10k area, so they can just take it patiently. So we are going to see actually the jacks sort of off to the side with um, the rest of the team grouping up potentially with them. You'd have to imagine the Jax wouldn't be the best at sieging. So the rest of the team does meet up and Jax is just 1v9ing everyone at the moment. Easy Smurf does steal away some of that resistance from the Jax ult. Uh, Kip Kangaroo continuing to take no damage. The raid boss is in full effect. Zookeeper looking for a little play. Mentalman hovering around as defense with his ultimate. Some low health bars, low mana bars rather as well. As Team 1 is just playing this out methodically, looking for the end here. We are going to see maybe a fight. We have the ult come in from Mentalman. A nice Yumi ult is going to capture uh, Kip Kangaroo there. Oh, Kane comes in with a huge engage. We have a nice Zonyas from FTR. The fight's actually not going too bad. Paranoid is going to be really key to this fight. We'll see if they can shut him down. But um, not enough damage there from Team 2. This might just be it. Zookeeper goes in for the engage. Paranoid flashes away. We have the shields and the healing from Miro, able to just play this elongated fight out too easily. And we have Kip Kangaroo come in with the flash and the kill onto Paranoid there. Kip Kangaroo taking this game into his own hands. And we have the beefy boys surviving, but they're not able to actually do any damage. And that is going to be GG there for Team 1, finishing off uh, the game. We just see... Uh We see um, game one, team one just uh, took an early lead, took an early advantage and snowballed it there pretty effectively. Um, keeping that goal lead increasing to a uh, at a steady rate. We didn't see much dips uh, of any kind and um, just finishing that game out pretty methodically. So a nice game there from team one. Um, team two did find some ways back in that game, but... Um, the gold lead, for the most part, just kept increasing uh, for Team 1. The, the trades that they were making weren't able to be effective enough. We saw uh, trades in the bot lane in that early game with the kills, but um, the turret plates that, uh, that they were getting topside, the turret kills, were just too much in the end, and uh, they kept the, the snowball rolling, as they say from the do Disco Nunus. Uh, but yeah, that is Game 1. Um, we saw some interesting stuff there from both sides, both uh, teams showing some some nice avenues of play, but uh, we'll, we'll keep the games rolling. We do have next up Team 1 versus Team 3, uh, so we will see Team 1 taking on uh, the other team in this group at the moment. We'll see how Team 3 fares uh, into Team 1. Uh, but yeah, that will be coming up soon. I believe we'll take a little break and then come straight back to you with that. So we'll see you soon. Okay, and we are back with uh, Game 2 of the Div 1 Queensland Trials. We have here Team 1 running it back from last game versus uh, Team 3 now. Um, and interestingly, we have had the uh, draft play out in Pro Draft. We do have a bit of a spicy pick here. We have Udia coming into play. Um, Udia is freshly updated. And uh, he's going to be pretty strong, I would imagine, as most updated Riot champions are. So I've yet to really see this champion in action, so it's going to be a bit of a treat. As you, uh, if we do see the champion select, we see um, a lot of mid bands actually coming through here. We have um, Silas and uh, Syndra, two of Chirp's most dominant champions, being banned away. As he is our highest ranked player in the tournament. To be clear, he's the uh, 10th highest ranked player in OCE, actually. So, um, he's a bit of a smurf to the old chef. He's quite high up there. Um, and he is on the Oriana this game. So, not on that lane dominant champion that we do sometimes see with him. But um, a bit more of a stable pick. I would imagine solo kills definitely aren't out of the picture, though, as uh, chef is able to find them left, right, and center. 
But we do have Miro up against Sharp this game in the mid lane. Miro did put on quite a good performance on the Seraphine last game, um, doing his job quite well, enabling the rest of the team. But I do like this here. We have what is traditionally picked with the Udir, uh, which is an enabler, which Oriana can do quite well. Uh, but also having that Yumi, so Yumi in that mid game is going to be able to sit on that Udir pretty well. Uh, that is for Team 1. We have, just running down from top to support, we have Aatrox, Udia, Oriana, Zeri, and Yumi. So pretty strong team comp, if I do say so, my, so myself. Um, and for Team... So that's for Team 3. And for Team 1, we have a pretty similar team comp to last game. Quite a standard team comp. Uh, a lot of team fighting potential for this team comp we have from top to support. Uh, nah, Trundle, Seraphine, Jinx, and Rakan. So very similar uh, to what we had last game. We have from mid to support the exact same champions actually. So running it back um, with the success that they had last game, we'll have to see how it turns out. Will I think this game come down to how OP that Udyr is? As uh, Chirp will be likely looking to work with Jiaoxin. Uh, the player on Udia this game, he is uh, on uh, YG Yinfu. He is a player from China, so he has got rather fresh accounts he is using currently. But um, words on the street is he has played in LDL trials previously, so he is quite a versed tournament player. Uh, but yeah, it's going to come down to how he w well he uses this new Udia. How well uh, Ariana and Ch on that chirp can work well with uh, YG Infu Jiaxin on the Udia, and how well the team can sort of scale into this game as they do have quite a good scaling comp, especially with that Zeriyumi. We saw Zeriyumi last game not really getting to scale into the game, but if they are enabled to do so, if they are able to make it into that late game, we're going to see uh, them put on quite a bit of work as they are one of the best scaling bot lanes, potentially the best in the game right now. So, Zeri was nerfed recently. Um, there's debates about how effective that nerf was and how hemorrhage Zeri is at the moment, but um, the W ratios, I believe, were nerfed and it was quite a menace in the late game. Uh, One-shotting people at times, so uh, a little bit insane in the damage numbers there. Definitely warranted a nerf. Um, but I can imagine it is still quite strong. We'll have to see Soy and uh, Kane just using the prio that they had from last game to really enable the rest of the team. Um, enable Zookeeper to do a lot of invades in that bot side jungle. Just keeping up the constant pressure. Um, as Zookeeper had quite a good game last game. It did stem from a very unfortunate play with Easy Smurf dying level 1. Um, Easy Smurf unfortunately got caught out by a cheeky Miro uh, root. But um, Easy Smurf also has COVID at the moment, unable to comms with his team as he has lost his voice. So, hearts out to Easy Smurf at the moment. But we are nearly into game, we're nearly underway here. As uh, we're going to see Team 3 for the first time. We've yet to see Team 3. Last game we had Team 1 versus Team 2. So Team 3 is still, still the unknown factor in this three-man round robin. Uh, we do actually have Shiloh on ADC and Frosty, Frosty on the support in this game. Uh, both players able to play that AD, able to play the supports. Um, Shows the ability of a good bot laner in general, able to swap back between those and shuts down any claims that support players are unskilled. Me, as a support player myself, disagree with that claim entirely. Um, although people have said my ability on jungle uh, specifically is, is not too high, I would debate those claims. Uh, my Hex Flash nearly gameplay is second to none. Uh, but we are in game underway we definitely have a spicy one on our hands here yep. 
And we are underway, folks. We have just a fanning out in the early game here. Looking to defend the vision uh, that Team 3, blue side, might look to get on the red buff here. Not going for the typical five-man fan. But they do actually walk away. We might see... Uh, we might see Jiaoxin, uh aka YG Infu in this game, going for a ward on the enemy red buff as he is looking, he's teetering up, he's looking to get vision and this could be quite important. Kip Kangaroo does spot it though, that is quite important. Uh, knowing that those wraiths are going to be warded there. See Chirp and Miro having a standoff here. Miro not willing to uh, blow his enhanced ability just yet. This is really the alpha game here. But we do actually see an early invade. So knowing that uh, Shiloh and Frosty with this bot lane duo of Zeri Yumi is so weak, they can't really defend. But uh, actually, quite important, it, the our jungle entrance was not warded. Uh, and neither is this red buff, so the enemy team's actually not going to know. So Zookeeper once again getting a really good start here for uh, for his jungle pathing. He's gonna look through, just uh, path straight through here, straight to his red buff actually. As I'm not sure if it was tracked, but YG Yinfu Jiaoxin is on a ward. Did, did get spotted rather. We'll have to see, does not contest. Zookeeper does have a red buff to uh, Jiaoxin's blue buff. And interestingly here, he knows that um, Zookeeper has come for that red buff, but he can easily take the chickens here. So nice adaptation there. Doesn't immediately run away, even though knowing that Miz has pro and uh, Zookeeper is in the mix. But Miro looking to gain pro in this lane. Bot lane we have... As with last game, with the exact same matchup, uh, Kane and Soy maintaining prior in this early game here. Gonna be able to get some key vision on the enemy jungle potentially, or just control of that river. As we have a solo kill already, Chip making use, I was told not to actually uh, rewind, as it <laughs> does stuff up the system. So I'll have to go back into um, action here, but I've just seen this solo kill here. We have. The solo kill from Chirp. Showing what he can do on this Ariana. And hopefully that is up to live again. And I haven't screwed up the broadcast. Um, I immediately forgot what I was told last game. So We have Kip Kangaroo maintaining pro as uh, you would expect in this matchup. The range versus melee. We have Zhang. Uh... Let's hope my pronunciation is good there, as we actually have Zookeeper going in on YG Yinfu here. YG Yinfu escaping on that Udia. Quite a new champion, um, so it can be hard to, to get mastery of those champions so quickly. Actually, we have Zookeeper looking onto Shiloh here. Doesn't interrupt the dash, I'm not sure if it's possible. I think it could be potentially, but um, Shiloh gets over the wall, gets the safety there. Zookeeper's efficiency in parting getting punished a little bit there. But yeah, interesting uh interesting to see here. YG Infu Jiaoxin just um looking to clear as fast as possible, not actually opting for any of these uh any of these lanes. Letting them be self sufficient. Does go for a cheeky bot. Uh, gank here potentially. We have to see Kane is walking up. YG Info goes, but um, Kane does have that dash and a nice uh, nice set of traps there from Soy. Dissuades any engage. And as we saw last game, Soy and Kane just gonna maintain this bro here. YG Info actually going in. Oh, Kane misses the knock up there, a little bit too preemptive. But uh, they're not going to be able to get much done. And YG Infu. Ooh, we do have... We do have not much happen here. Jiaxin almost goes down. 
but we have here Kip Kangaroo getting solo killed there by Dojang. That is huge. Huge wave under the tower. Uh, Dojang getting the solo kill there in a 1v2 situation, knowing that Zookeeper is coming for him, knowing that there's a huge wave under tower. Uh, and getting a kill against one of the... One of the tournament favorites for top lane here. Kip Kangaroo is being heralded in his uh, play in QT into Varsity. It's been quite good. And Dojiang role swapped currently from uh, from bot to top. He used to be a top lane player playing for UQ Div 2, but now currently playing ADC. And showing he's still got it, able to take on the best. It's a nice cheeky little play there from Dojiang. That was huge to see. Although. We see all of those minions crash into the wave. Actually, Dojiang is still 15 CS behind. I didn't notice that, so... Pretty important in the this matchup here. Despite getting that kill. But uh, to even go even in gold in this matchup, I believe it... It is quite, uh, quite good for the Aatrox. We have with the Pro here from Soy and Kane. Not doing too much, uh, not doing much, uh, <laughs> too much different with it, but we just do see them using that prior for a consistent early drag. This is the, uh, the ability of the Jinx in the early game. The wave clear from those rockets just able to guarantee so much prior. We have a level advantage, two level advantage for Chirp here. Looking to just zone mirror away from the wave. And we see Chirp acknowledging that um, potential jungle proximity here. Mirror looking to bait something in there. Taking trades as level 5 to level 7 is definitely uh, not favorable. Oh, we see YG Info uh, he is going to get caught out here on his jungle. He flashes over the pillar, but YG Info is going to fall down. And that's a nice little counter jungle there from Zookeeper, supported by Kane. Showing what this, uh, showing what this prior in the bot lane can do, just enabling Zookeeper so much in both of these games. See Kane also looking mid with the free agency that he has. Miro potentially looking to hold this, but it's too big. Uh, he is just going to clear it. Chirp going for some deep vision on the top side of the map. See Dojiang looking to put pressure on, but falling down in the CS department a little bit for it. Pushes Kip Kangaroo off the wave. Zookeeper amounting a little bit of a CS... Uh, CS gold lead there for himself. Rather, two kills, only a six CS lead. Chirp going for a reset or a potential... Rift Herald play. This will be where uh, Chirp can enable the, the UD here quite a bit. We do have uh, we do have Yumi actually roaming up here, which will be quite important for this uh, Herald fight. It's going to be a potential four v four here. We have both ADs farming way in the bot lane, and uh, Team Three on blue side. They are going to constrict enemy team here put them into their own jungle and hold on to this herald position but um, team one is looking and we have chirp a little bit out of position does get altered and he's gonna maybe fall down here we see him cast the alt in that play but that is gonna be soy taking out chirp with that rocket and team uh, team one just taking a nice fight there team three a little bit um a little bit disconnected Chirp getting a little bit punished there, looking to zone, but uh, Team 1 just call his bluff and pull the trigger. We have, again, th 3k gold advantage already for the side of uh, Team 3 here. Team 1, rather. Team 3 falling behind 3k themselves. Shallow just farming up in the spot lane. As with last game, CS for this area is going to be pretty important. C4 
see Zookeeper bot side. Top for the most part, pretty untouched this game. Especially compared to uh, to the pressure that was being put on last game. With the uh, the Jacks getting such an early game advantage. We do see here Zookeeper actually running Chirp down. Absolutely chunking him. YG Info comes to assist, but um, they're not going to be able to get too much done. No pillar. So, not able to keep the pressure on, but Zookeeper just looking to zone them off. We do have the ult come in. Oh, so he hunts with the ult, but uh, the blast cone brings Chirp to safety there. You see how Zookeeper keep on the pressure here. YG Info Junction. Looking to claim his own camps, but uh, it's a little bit harder here. Zookeeper pretty strong at the moment, has his Divine Sunderer. Whereas uh, YG Info only has two he health crystals, and he goes for it, but that is not the fight you want to take. And Frosty, Frosty actually gets interrupted there. He gets displaced, so it means he's not going to be able to go on uh, on his teammate anymore. Shiloh does flash away, nearly gets the kill, but Kane actually gets away there, and Shiloh is going to get the shutdown. That is huge onto uh, huge shutdown onto Shiloh there. Oh, Miro snipes him. <laughs> Juicy snipe there. Was not expecting that. Just clips him on the edge. There's Dojang getting punished in his top lane. Meanwhile. Does go for... Um, does go for a potential gore drinker. On the Aatrox there. Oh, Chirp getting some damage onto Miro. Not going to be a solo kill, but just pushing him out here. No TP for Miro, so... Chirp's going to have full control of this mid wave here. Kane acknowledges this, looking to help uh, Mirror out a little bit. Get some control back of this mid wave. We have Kip Karanguru putting some pressure on. Kane, though, looking. He doesn't have ult yet, but Chirp's surrounded. No flash. And that's just going to be a dead Chirp there. We also have solo kills coming left, right, and center. We have Soy and Zookeeper hunting down Shiloh and Frosty there. And they are just going to get this uh, bot turret. Keep snowballing their lead. We have Kip Kangaroo. I'll just rewind this for a second and fast forward it back up. But Kip Kangaroo getting a solo kill showing why he is so renowned on this top lane here. Oh, pulls him into the turret there. Diojan getting a little bit too ambitious. And hopefully back to life. And, and we have um, Suki for here getting a, a dragon. YG Info looking to contest. They are the same level, but Zookeeper takes it. YG Info maybe going to get punished. Does flash away there. Yumi keeping him alive. But uh, that's another uh, drag going over to Team uh, Team 1 there. So he's putting on the pressure here. Miro looking as well. Frosty just getting run down there. Hops off the Yumi for some reason. Off the Zeri. Dojang looking for the 1v1. Is a level down. Doesn't have ult, but uh, Kip Kangaroo doesn't have ult as well. Oh, the flash predict from Kip Kangaroo gets him to safety there. Chirp getting run down here. Chirp caught on the side lane and um, Zookeeper working with Miro. Take him down. The ult just misses from Soy there. Looking to keep the pressure onto Shiloh. As Dujang looking for another kill. A little bit ambitious here. Oh, he does get the killer shutdown. Beautiful stuff there from Dojang. The last minute sub. Roll swapped from AD. Showing off his skills in the top lane. Has kept that CS difference at 15. Um, but getting the shutdown, getting another solo kill in his back pocket is important here. As we do have almost a 10k gold lead um, here for Team 1, actually. This is just snowballing out of control. Frosty caught on his lonesome. 
we do actually have Chirp coming with the rest of the squad. Kane fall back, but barely loses any health bar there. YG Info looking to fight, but he is way too weak, and Zookeeper just showing why Trundle is picked so often in the meta right now. Yosheng caught in the middle of five members, potentially. Does get the kill onto uh, Soy, actually. Very nice kill there. That's a huge shutdown. Miro launches an ult all the way from the other side of the map. Doesn't connect onto Chirp, but he still falls down nonetheless. And the key to... Um, the key to Team 3's team comp here on blue side was scaling into this game, but it looks like um, they haven't been able to make that happen. Fallen a little bit by the wayside in this early game, and they are falling down further behind. We have uh, we have that gold lead hit the 10k and go past. It is almost at 11k at the moment. We have Shiloh trying to farm up as much as possible, but um, it is going to be pretty hard at this point for the Zeri to uh, to be relevant in this game. We're going to see the Jinx uh, from Soy, which was a bit more of a supporting role last game. Actually, we have Doijang getting caught here. Kip Kangaroo with a very nice play. Just getting a very cheeky solo kill here. Oh, not solo kill, rather. Miro was there supporting in the mix. Miro providing uh, a lot here on this uh, Seraphine, both games. Not going for flashy plays uh, with this champion. Just being the supportive role that, that his team needs, which is uh, so often necessary. Zookeeper finding Chirp on the side lane again. Chirp all on his lonesome, pushed out without any vision and without any, without any turrets. He's going to get caught here. The rocket just misses, but uh, he is going to fall down here. And that is another death for Chirp there. Team 3 is pushed heavily into, uh, into their own base here. Chirp not able to, to clear those side waves out um, with safety. Does get, uh, does get caught just for clearing those waves a little bit too far. As Team 3 really just need to turtle here as much as possible, but um, Team 1 is going to keep the pressure on her. So we'll see. They do have the Herald to use here. It is only 17 minutes. Uh, it's easy to forget that with uh, so much action that's been happening. Team 1 looking for a Dancing Rift Herald potentially. They are going to look for this um, look for this inhib, but they're going for the bot inhib as well. That's pretty important. Chirp getting potentially solo killed here by Kip Kangaroo. Kip Kangaroo takes down Chirp, showing uh, showing off with his Nar this game, putting in some work as YG Info looking to chase him down. But we have the rest of the team is looking for the game end here. And Kip Kangaroo 1v2ing, YG Info just can't catch up to him. Let's see if Dojang can uh, keep him in safety. Oh, Kip Kangaroo gets the snipe, but Dojang is going to clean up here. And Dojang might be able to come assist the rest of the squad here, but it is a uh, 3v4 at the moment. A nice snipe from Shiloh, but uh, it's not going to be enough, you would imagine. No ult from Dojang there, but... Does force that flash. Kane nearly falling down. Chirp actually TP'd in here. And all pulls Soy back in. And that's going to be a kill onto the AD there. A nice collapse from the, the top and mid there. Dojiang and Chirp. Acknowledging that they have, uh, they have some agency to look there. Have Chirp. No ult, but... Is going to be able to push them off, but the TP behind is looking to cut them off. We have YG Infu tr coming to meet the rest of them. Kip Kangaroo is going to look for this engage, but he doesn't have Ma Na ulti just yet. Doesn't have Mega Na. And he is just about to reach it now. He goes for the ult onto Chirp, flashes in and pulls him against the turret. Dojiang does have ult now, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get it done. He flashes onto Miro. No flash onto Miro. We'll have to see if he can get the kill. Oh, the ult buffer does get Shiloh killed. Nice work there, but Dojang is going crazy here. He gets a shutdown onto uh, Miro. And looks like Kip Kangaroo is chasing YG Yimfu down. Looks like he's just going to end the game potentially there. Dojang 
in trouble. Oh my god. Frosty peeks his head and gets chomped on. Dojiang does get the kill, actually. Dojiang going wild in the end of this game, but Kip Guru just says GG. Well played and finishes it off. And we have some uh, we have some words in the chat. Are the Warriors playing next? Someone asks. <laughs> So, we do have here Game 2 played out. That is Div 1, Game 2 played and finished. We have one more game left, uh, which we'll see Team 2 versus Team 3. Uh, we had Team 1 take both of those games. Um, a little bit of an Exodia team, potentially, there. Uh, team 1 a little bit too good. And they're just taking both of those dubs out. Playing very similar comps in Game 1 and Game 2, actually. Um, using the early game prio from that matchup that they have uh, to just really strangle the enemy jungle out with uh, Zookeeper. And um, this game, a little bit less so with uh, the top lane focus, but able to just put the pressure on through mid, through bot, and uh, just take these, take the turrets out and um, snowball this game, just get complete control of the map, essentially. Uh, so clean stuff there from Team 1, getting the the back-to-back -back dubs. Um, we do now have the next game going to come up in a second. Uh, but we'll take a little bit of a break before we have uh, Team 2 take on Team 3 to uh, to figure out who's second best to uh, Team 1, as they have crowned themselves for the time being. Um, so yeah, we'll take a little bit of a break, and we'll come back to you uh, for that one. So see you soon. Over a Hello and welcome back to the third and final game of Div 1 Queensland Trials. We have now completed uh, all our other games for the other divisions. Uh, I think Div 3 might have another game running. I heard some whispers of a uh, potential continuation of stream on Griffith. Uh, if you wanted to chuck that in the background um, and have a check, but I'm not too sure. We have completed Div 2 though, um, for sure, and now we just have Div 1 left. So we have here Team 3 versus Team 2, both teams falling down to Team 1. Um, team 1 showing themselves as the Exodia team, uh, winning pretty handily in both games. So we do see now Team 2 and Team 3 facing up against each other. And, uh, and how they'll show up against each other will be interesting to see both teams having uh, different strengths and different weaknesses and different areas of their team. Um, and how they play to those is going to be how, uh, how they come away with the win, really. So whether they can recognize those win conditions early on, we'll see. Um, and whether they can execute as well will be quite important. Um, but yeah, as well as that, it's uh, it's really all about coordination and communication, and how well you can easily adapt to new teammates in this sort of environment, where you uh, you're not used to having uh, these sorts of teammates, different teammates, people you haven't played with on your team uh, before in comms, and uh, for those players that are naturally communicative. Uh, able to coordinate easy with other players, they will have a big advantage when it comes to this. Um, one player that is usually quite good at this, from what I hear, is Easy Smurf. But unfortunately, um, he does have COVID today. He has lost his voice. Uh, so thoughts and prayers with Easy Smurf at the moment. Hopefully, he's doing well. But he is troop. He is a trooper. He's uh, trudging along. Um, and that is in Team Two. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see how they go, how they uh, adapt to their previous games, Team 2 and Team 3. Um, you may also have noticed uh, I'm wearing a KT Rolster jacket. You may notice that it's a 2018 KT Rolster jacket. Uh, this jacket is from when they basically became runners-up in uh, the 2018 World, uh, World Championships because, let's face it, Fnatic, uh, Fnatic lost 0-3, and uh, KT took them to a best of five and nearly won it. So, um, yeah, no big deal. It's a pretty, pretty rare jacket, pretty cool jacket. And uh, you may also notice that it's uh, got on the back of it, um, if you can see there, is uh, score. 
the coach of the best LCK team right now. Um, by correlation, that makes me the best coach in um, in the OCE University scene, I guess. I would suppose that makes sense, uh, putting two and two together. Um, but yeah, if anybody has two million in the bank, I would be willing to sell this uh, to you. So please drop uh, drop your ads in the the dis uh, the chat and the Discord and Twitch chat, um, and let me know. Maybe I'd be willing to sell two mil. Maybe I give in the low as uh, one point five million. Um, but with the signature, uh, obviously, it would be a little bit more. So we'll see. We are about to go, and we have some questions. If the stream is ready, we are ready to go. Uh, so we will launch now into um, our third and final game draft. As we do have um, Pro Draft already played out. And we will have uh, the players picking their champions. Not actually in Pro Draft order. They are all in um, lane order. Except for YG Yinfu and Doji Yang are swapped around. I don't know if this is on purpose or they're actually uh, swapping. But um, yeah, we did see Doji Yang, one of my Div 2 UQ ADC players, uh, Returning back to his roots, playing top lane last game, and um, playing quite well, earning himself an Aatrox ban already. Uh, so that's nice to see. He must have um, he must have learned a thing or two from my coaching, I would imagine. But yeah, we have uh, the third game here, so last chance for these players to to show their value for Queensland Trials. The players selected from today's trials will be playing next, uh, in two weeks rather, in the New South Wales vs Queensland tournament, in which uh, we'll have three different divisions of uh, different Queensland teams going against the uh, respective New South Wales team. See which state can be crowned king or queen. But uh, we do have an interesting champion select phase here chirp on his signature pick on that syndra uh this pick has brought many nightmares to many different people um and uh he has showed that he is quite dominant on the champion but on the other hand in that mid lane uh versing chirp on his syndra is ftr on the victor as a previous victor one trick myself uh, I do think that this matchup is quite good for Victor, but um, there's definitely avenues for Syndra to outplay it. And for Chirp specifically, I would definitely imagine he has the ability to uh, to make it work. But uh, especially as you scale into that light game, Victor can provide so much for his team. Um, while Syndra... If Syndra doesn't get ahead early, can start to fall off. And we have also a triple AP topside. So whether they can really get this damage going early um, and get this snowball started, or if uh, Team 3 can sort of, or Team 2 rather, absorb the pressure and scale, they do have an on top to absorb all of that magic damage. You would imagine uh, building into the triple AP top side will be pretty uh, pretty easy. Pretty happy to do that from Mental Men. Um, but uh, we do have the champion select coming up soon, hopefully, for all of you lovely viewers to see. Uh, but we'll be going into delay in a little bit, and we'll have about three minutes until game starts. But just rolling down... For uh, Team 2, we have Mentalman on Orn, we have Easy Smurf on Wukong, FTR on Victor, Siva on Para uh, Paranoid on Siva rather, and uh, Rusty on Lulu. So, quite a good team fighting comp there. Uh, a lot of scalability. Um, Siva is one of those early game champs, uh, early game prio champs rather that uh, can scale quite well into the late game. Provides a lot of different things for their team, so very good pick in the meta at the moment. Whereas on the other side, we have uh, going down from top to support again, Dojiang on Sejuani, a little bit less uh, playmaking ability on that champ compared to the Aatrox last game. But Dojiang on Sejuani, 
YG Info on Talia. I've seen quite good things from uh, Xiaoxing. If my pronunciation is not right, Nufflets, uh, please tell me. Unfortunately, we can't have the draft up just yet, <laughs> Mr. Nufflets. Soy, um, putting on quite a good performance last game on the uh, on the old Jinx. But yeah, continuing my uh, my descriptive analysis of this uh, of this draft, as uh, we'll have the pictures up soon. But um, we do have. Chirp on the Syndra as, as I was talking about in that Victor vs Syndra matchup as well as Shiloh on Lucian and Frosty on Nami for the Lucian Nami So he says I don't know why they keep picking Zeriyumi bro <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately um, The Zeriyumi lane does not offer much to the team prior to uh, 20 minutes does have to concede everything and uh the jinx uh jinx for khan definitely has a lot of pressure on the uh map chap is on syndra this game ftr might be uh shaking in his boots we'll have to see everyone um type one in the chat if you think ftr is gonna solo kill chap syndra uh he would have to be the king slayer in order to do so because I don't think I've yet to see Chirp be dethroned on his signature pick. Although Chirp does have quite a few signature picks at this point, he is um, just a bit of a legend in that mid lane. But this game will come down to uh, Syndra and Chirp, whether they're able to gain that pressure in the mid lane and roam around the map with YG Infu Zhangxing on this Talia. They would be able to exert a lot of pressure on the map uh, with this duo. It is a double AP duo, and with the Syndra, there is a lot of burst there, so building magic resist into that uh, can really stem and squash a lot of the, the power on the Syndra. is able to get that early game lead and really just take over the game before they can start stacking that magic resist. So we'll have to see. We do have Lucian Nami in the bot lane, though. Quite a lot of uh, early game power in that lane, so we do have quite a contrast between uh, between red side and blue side here. As we are just coming into game now, and we do have the uh, we have the champs and the teams up for you to see. They. They aren't as beautiful as my linguistics uh, described. Uh, but we do have, like I said, that triple AP top side of the map for red team, for uh, team three there. And yeah, it's really going to come down to whether they can keep that early pressure on. And uh, whether they can they can keep the pressure on before the, the magic starts stacking for this side of, uh, of team two here. But looking for an early invade, Dojang spots them out, hovers around, not going to be able to, to get caught, but um, does ward the red actually. Interestingly enough, there was no ward that came down from, uh, from Team 3 there, or Team 2 rather. So they bait out a ward from Dojang, and uh, no ward topside, so... Not interested in tracking the red camp there, the red buff. So you have Easy Smurf starting on blue side, uh, on his blue rather, getting a leash from Mentalman. We have Paranoid and Rusty showing to lane, showing that they're not leashing, and um, this is interesting to see. Easy Smurf likely predicted to have started blue either way. Gonna be pathing towards this bot side most likely, unless he goes uh, for that jungle invade on red. But uh, you would imagine with the ward that was placed, they probably uh, they probably won't be as interested in doing that. We do have Chirp putting on the pressure in mid already, as uh, Chirp loves to do, getting the automation, the animation cancel there rather, 
uh, with the uh, EQ into stun. Nice buggy little interaction. One of Sindra's favorite things. Having bug interactions. But we have uh, Xiaoxing, Waiji Infu. Not going to his red buff. He's actually looking for a very, very cheeky uh, level 3 gank. But whether this is going to work out, uh, I'm not so sure. We have Paranoid has yet to start Spell Shield, and that's pretty important. Frosty nearly dying there. Shiloh going in, but this is definitely not how you want uh, the matchup for Lucian Nami to go. Flash comes in, early flash from Rusty. Xiaoxing's combo does not land. Double sums bone from Rusty, but um, they're sitting pretty at the moment, and Xiaoxing really losing uh, efficiency here. I guess he was potentially expecting an invade topside, but uh, Easy Smith might just go for his uh, red here. As he he saw him bot side, he saw him without the red buff. He knows that he hasn't taken that yet. Easy Smith hunting chap, looking to push him away, but. Xiaoxing is pathing up. We see after FTR got punished, uh, bullied out a little bit by Chirp before uh, Easy Smurf came to his rescue. Oh, we do have a first blood. I'll just rewind before fast forwarding. And we'll see this. Wow, that. A first blood from the uh, Siva Lulu into Lucian Nami. Definitely not what you want to be seeing if you are Team 3. Shallow <laughs> being chipped away here. A lot of poke from this uh, matchup here, Paranoid and Rusty. See, Chirp actually maybe going to fall down here. Easy Smurf comes in, but early flash away gets him to safety. Easy Smurf fakes the clone. But why do you info here? Oh, Easy Smurf, they thought he actually used the clone. Goes in on Chirp and goes flashes forward. Beautiful mechanics there. And nice spacing. And looks like they might be able to get the second kill here. Easy Smurf and FTR. Showing some prowess on the mid jungle duo here. Baiting a nice uh, gank there. Jugshin going for some tricky pathing. Trying to escape here. Easy Smurf does get knocked up. But uh, YG Yimfu is just going to be trapped here. Nowhere he can go. Doesn't have his abilities up. Not cooldown. Not uh, short enough cooldowns here. Looks like he might want to donate to FDR, but the laser is a little bit too awkward. We have Rusty trading vision here, knowing that there's no threat on this bot side. And getting free wars in the enemy jungle there. We're seeing from Team 1 uh, what this early game prior can do and uh, how important it can be in enabling your jungle to really take over the game. And that was really key for um, for Team 1 in uh, both games. Oh, we, we actually have a potential <laughs> uh, solo kill. I Chef just gets so many solo kills, you know, I can't expect them. Um, Chirp putting on the pressure on FTR and predicts Easy Smurf's invisibility. Chirp going for the kill, gets a shutdown, almost getting a double kill. And oh, he gets a little bit too ambitious. FTR claims the kill there. YG Infu does have flash, but not gonna look. He might look here. FTR without flash. YG Infu's holding. Doesn't opt to pull the trigger. Going bot side actually, as um, they are taking a fight, but Xiaoxing, YG Yimfu is parked away. You have to. Oh, yeah, I guess he's going to punish FTR. Makes sense. FTR looking to push up that wave, but. Um, oh, we have Dojiang getting solo killed by Mentalman there. A lot of action on the map here. It's, uh, it's pretty chaotic, but we do have blue team, team 2, coming out on top uh, at the end of the day. See Easy Smurf going for an early invade here. No wards in their jungle to, to track this one out, but um, Shiloh and Frosty are coming back from base. 
not going to look to toward their jungle. So he does go unspotted. Chap continuing to uh, take control of this mid lane here, putting so much pressure on FTR. It is where um, Syndra is best in this matchup. Able to put so much pressure on onto the uh, victor. Easy Smurf goes in. Chap acknowledges it. Even though there was no wards there, and beautiful pathing actually gets him to safety. Opting not to walk straight to his uh, straight to his pink after the gravity field was used by FTR and actually just walks down. We see YG Info go onto FTR here, forces a flash, a beautiful knockup, and Chirp gets the kill there. Easy Smurf is going in, but um, doesn't have backup. Chirp is going to fall down here. Easy Smurf gets the kill, but Dojang is here, and Easy Smurf almost gets the double kill. He does fall down as he is 1v4. Five actually, all five members show up for the party in the mid lane. Mentalman up top, wave pushed in, not able to roam. So if we look at the uh, the gold on all the champions here, you can see a lot of it is. Um, I love it on Chirp for red side here. Whereas for blue side, we see uh, a decent amount on Easy Smurf. A decent, a decent amount on uh, Paranoid here. We see also, while I'm checking out uh, the gold and having a little bit of sleep, a nice cheeky gank from Jiaxing uh, YG Yimpu. And Doshiang <laughs> throws out the, uh, the ult in the wrong direction. But they do get the kill nonetheless. Easy Smurf is going to wait in the mix here. Dojang uses, uses his dash. Oh, YG Info spots him out and uh, can't stop him though, unfortunately. Dojang is going to fall down. Easy Smurf with the nice gank here cleans up and is going to hold the wave uh, for his top laner. This is pretty important. But does it hold? I think that might just do so. I'm no side lane expert though. Chirp playing so aggressively is looking for FTR, but Easy Smurf is hunting him down. Chirp knows his limits too well though. Easy Smurf comes in. Quick little trade in and out. Gives FTR a little bit of breathing room there. Oh, we do see a solo kill there. But. Shiloh and Frosty just getting taken down. Paranoid here getting the kills with Rusty. And they're just winning this matchup very handedly. We see here just quickly the solo kill. How does this happen? FTR getting taken down by Chirp there. Chirp just putting on so much pressure. Showing why he's just a one-man army. And we see for the top side of the map here, Dojiang and YG Infu Jiaxing. Getting that uh, Rift Herald there. Easy Smurf looking to trade with the Dragon, but is the tempo too off, uh, off here? Looks like Jiaxing won't be um, coming there in time, won't be ulting his way over. Is in base for a fair while actually. Must be waiting on some gold. Buys a dark seal. See Mentalman starting to take control of this lane here. We see also an early hex drinker come in for Easy Smurf, teching against that triple AP topside. Easy Smurf also catching Frosty. Very beautiful stuff. Catches the, uh, the enemy support before they even get back to lane. Knowing that the uh, the timers of AD and stuff were a little bit off. Mentalman goes for the knockup on Dojang, but Dojang dances out a little bit. Dojang gets the ult perfectly timed onto Mentalman here. And Mentalman actually gets the kill, showing his own mechanics. Beautiful stuff. Gets the trade in the 1v2. And actually might get out. This would be incredible. Why'd you even feel without flash? Dojang. 
<laughs> Dojin gets taken down. Jiaxing, YG Yunfu on the Talia. Uh, gets outplayed. Mentalman, some nice cheeky little mechanics there. We see Chirp with the roam down here, but um, they're looking to collapse actually. FTR looking to cut him off, does have the uh, gravity field, doesn't place it down in time, and that is actually really important. Chirp's able to get through that choke point. FTR looking to come through, not enough damage from Chirp there to kill him as there is Merc Treads on, um, on that Victor. Crucial in this matchup to get an early Merc Treads. Not only reduces a little bit of the burst, but um, it's important for the stun duration. We do see here gold lead built up by Easy Smurf. Five kills. Uh, sitting at 5.6k gold here. The most in the game, I believe. Is indeed. See the, the Rift Herald placed and uh, left to its own devices while they rotate top. Looking to dive Paranoid here, actually. Oh, Paranoid caught out. Does not get the spell shit in time as he wasn't watching. Paranoid actually escapes here. Some nice work. Doesn't even have an ult. Just use the flash and heal for that one. Uh, but they are able to burn the sums there. Mentalman doesn't catch them. Mentalman without ult as well. FTR caught here, though. A little bit desynced with the rest of his team and he gets taken out. We see here the, the pressure from mid just being exerted to the rest of the map. Taking down that mid turret and just looking to translate it into top. Paranoid looking to catch some CS on that side lane here. Can't do so. Easy Smurf not quite able to take down Chirp here. His Mentorman leaves the minions as uh, <laughs> he heads down towards bot lane. Shiloh looking to um, get some chip damage on the turret. Do you have Easy Smurf looking for this top lane dive here, but well answered by the enemy team. They've read the situation and they're actually here ready to take him on. Easy Smurf really tanking a lot here. Does go in. Nice Zonyas here from Dojang. Wasn't expecting that so early on. And we do have Chirp just decimating the rest of the team here. Really huge that uh, Easy Smurf gets the kill there, but um, it is going to be a trade for Red Side here. Very crucial one. Get them back on, into this game a little bit more as they uh, they hit 26k to um, Blue Team's 25k. Team 3 taking a little bit more control of this game from that fight. A nice read on the play there. Acknowledging that uh, Dojang was in danger there with the way the wave was set up with the, uh, the proximity of Paranoid and Rusty. And so far in this mid game, they've been able to uh, to shut down a lot of the strength of Paranoid and Rusty that they were starting to develop from that lane phase. Paranoid and Rusty winning that lane phase out into the matchup. Um, which was quite key for their team, but... Nicely done by the side of Team 3 to uh, stem that lead. We will come up to live as Clavera Drake just spawns. Team 3 looking to take control here. We'll have to see Team 2 hovering around. They're looking to take a fight. Chirp gets huge damage onto Rusty. A nice Orno comes in. Mental Man with a huge flank. And goes in, doesn't actually get the knock up. But Chirp is looking to do so much damage, but the flank. They pincer them. A nice work from uh, Team 2 there. Able to gain control of the dragon area, but after the fight, after everything happens, they, they look to actually concede control of the pit. Dojiang comes in. It is a 2v3 on this side of the map. Dojang still had flash. I uh, still had ult, but FTR flashes it. Frosty is going to fall down here. FTR. Dance around. YG Infu comes in. Helps save Dojang. Uh, and overall, Team 2 plays the fight nicely. Patient with it. 
uh, able to use Mentalman's flank for the collapse. Mentalman, uh, pretty important, actually did not land <laughs> the knockup. <laughs> sort of flew into the enemy team. Um, but without landing that knockup, the fight was not as bad as it could have been. But the fight over this uh, lonely Cloud Drake is hampered. And we have 17 minutes, only one dragon taken. That is actually quite important in the grand scheme of things as um, Team 2, you would imagine, is going to scale better. Blue, blue side here. They're going to be happy with uh, the fact that these drags are taken so, so late. The game is not accelerating as much as maybe they would have liked to. This team, one, uh, team 2 is going to give up this drag. Not much they can do here. Little bit of an A RAM for the moment. The Rift Terrell was starting to be traded here. Izzy Smurf is looking for a huge flank. As he goes into the middle, he has a huge cyclone, but he doesn't have the uh, follow up from his team. Oh my god, a huge ult there from Mentalman. They are maybe going to be able to clean this up. We'll have to see it. It's going to be all up to FTR and Paranoid. Paranoid gets the clean up there. Sh sh oh my god, Chep flashes in. Was not expecting that. Catches me off guard a little bit. Flash in for the kill. Also caught FTR and Paranoid off guard because um, they weren't there to help out their teammate. Chep goes for the throat there. And it's pretty important that they do get that kill. Uh, they dissuade any potential look on that Rift Herald. Paranoid is getting flanked here. Has to run away from the TP from Derjiang. And is just going to run around into turret for a potential execute. Shiloh is here though. Not able to catch up onto him though. And oh my god, Parrot actually breaks everyone's ankles. And manages to escape there. Nice work by Paranoid. Paranoid and Chirp in particular showing pathing and, and movement uh, these past few games. And how important it is. Able to escape what uh, many players, including myself, would have thought is a guaranteed kill. What well, we see... Oh, Team 2 looks to try and take the Herald, but uh, it does despawn before they can grab it. Chirp on this side lane is going to be a big threat. Not many, uh, not many people that can answer to him. Mentalman actually has not teched into any magic resist other than Merc Treads, which doesn't provide much value. Uh, so he still can be punished in the side lane here. As you see, Chirp is punishing him as much as possible, and he's going to fall down. Yeah, going for the um, Frostbite Gauntlet. It does really punish him here. You'd think with uh, Lucian being the only AD threat, he would really tech into uh, magic resist here, but does get punished heavily by the shopkeeper. Boris is uh, Boris is sitting pretty for a team three at the moment. We actually have F uh, Chirp immediately TP into this top lane here. He's not wasting any pressure, and. Um, He's just looking to keep up the tempo. As FTR goes for the solo kill, this is actually how this matchup is played, and that was beautiful work. FTR showing his movement on this Victor, dodging away from the stun there from Chirp, and as soon as that happens, you win an easy smurf. A very beautiful engage onto Doxing. I mean, uh, YG Yinfu, Xiaoxing. As we have Shiloh and Frosty looking to dissuade pressure from Paranoid and Rusty there. We have an ult from Orn. Does miss everyone. FTR is looking for Frosty though, and he is going to get caught on the back end. Some beautiful stuff there from Team 2. Amazing footwork from FTR, showing that even with 10 kills on the Syndra, all you have to do is get that, uh, get that stun dodged. And suddenly you can win this matchup pretty handily. Nice flank from Easy Smurf as well, acknowledging that um, 
FTR was winning that 1v1 in the top side and... Oh, Easy Smurf gets cancelled there. Dojiang looking to punish him as Easy Smurf fakes it out with the clone a little bit. But Easy Smurf is going to get punished here as uh, Dojiang gets a nice ult. Easy Smurf caught shopping, I think, in the... In the... Gets punished. They're actually looking to start up Baron here, but you've got to think this is a bold move. Early ult comes out there from Nami. Very early. As uh, this is not looking good here for uh, Team 2. Uh, team 3, rather. Very bold Baron call. And Chirp almost falls down there. Paranoid. And a flash from FTR gets the kill. Mentalman going into the mix of everyone, but again, does not have the tankiness to uh, survive there. YG Infu pushes them away. Frosty uh, looking to add threat. But not too much side lane action. Um, everyone's looking to hover around this Baron even to 23 minutes. We do have the drag here coming up at around 23 minutes 30. game is quite slow at this point. Not going to have soul point until uh, at least probably around 30 minutes or something. And we do have um, Dragon Slain here. Infernal Soul, not seeing any Cloud Souls anymore. Team 2 uh, team is going to be happy with that if they can keep this Dragon stacking up. At 2 at the moment do have the scaling advantage with this comp and uh, as you see the magic resist gets teched more and more into we see uh, easy smurf is not losing to the shopkeeper needs to advise mentalman a little bit potentially as uh, he does have let's have a look at the stats exactly um, from easy smurf We have 181 magic resists already. Dojang looking to flank here. Easy Smurf actually has a flank of his own and goes onto Shiloh, forces the flash out. But this is huge. The TP comes in and the shutdown actually goes onto uh, Paranoid there. But already Chirp is dead and that's going to be them cleaning up the fight. Easy Smurf's flank in the background is able to just put so much pressure on. Easy Smurf showing how important uh, not losing out to the shopkeeper can be. As at this point, the fact that they've able to uh, survive this early game, keep scaling, they're in a very good position with their comp here. A Baron take of 25 minutes. They're going to be able to put on the pressure here. Look to translate this into a top turret kill uh, once everyone is reset. Actually, we have a TP here. Dojang TPing. We actually have Chirp coming up in one second as well. He is going to TP to the exact same ward. That's a lot of low health bars here. For the side of Team 3, or Team 2 rather, and Chirp is hunting down. Look how tanky these guys are. Easy Smurf is unkillable, and he does get the kill there. Easy Smurf looking for Chirp. Easy Smurf is essentially exerting. He's looking for more fake. Oh, he nearly gets the kill there. Chirp shows his mechanics though, and that is huge there for uh, Team 3. Turn what was a terrible situation around actually. Not able to get the Baron, but um, able to kill a lot of the members who had it. So Paranoid is one of the only members left that actually still has that uh, Baron buff. Chirp just uh, holds that fight on at the last second. Showing his uh, Syndra mechanics and, and what they're worth here. Able to salvage what could have been uh, a very bad fight for them. But you can see in the mix of everything, um, Easy Smurf is taking longer and longer to get killed. And he does now have his uh, Force of Nature finished up. So, going to be more unkillable as time goes on. Frosty looking to get a little bit of vision control here. We have Mentalman. On the top lane, someone is pinging out to take that top turret there. You've got to imagine that is uh, Easy Smurf, actually, as he doesn't have any means of communicating 
other than pings and in-game chats. So coordinating the team a little bit in the tempo play here, it seems, and the Baron util utilization. As Mental Winner is going to hit away freely on this top side of the map here. A trade onto uh, the bot side of the map, giving up control, but Dragon's not up for another minute. They're happy to concede that control, having to uh, give up that side of the map. Not too concerned. Team 3 now look to get a little bit of control back of their top side, though. We do have just a, a one turret uh, Baron play at the moment. You would imagine they're going to use the Baron to uh, get priority in their lanes in, in bot and uh, mid here. And translate it into control of this river. It's going to be important for them to uh, base soon. Actually, Frosty has just base to refill his wards. It will be key in uh, maintaining control of this river. Paranoid is all lonely in the mid lane. Gets some support now, and they're going to be able to... Oh my god, Chirp gets absolutely insane amount of damage done, but he is going to fall down for it, and you got to think that's not worthwhile, that trade. As Oh my god, Easy Smurf is going ham on the back line here. He's looking to 1v9 this game, as he just takes down Shiloh easily. FDR helps him out with YG Infu, and that's going to be Frosty falling down there as well, and... Although Baron buff is down, you've got to imagine this is going to be at least an in here, potentially the game here. So we do have a fair few death timers here. Chirp is up in 20 seconds, but is it going to be enough? Dojang is getting damaged down from Easy Smurf, and Easy Smurf sets up the kill for Mentalman. Mentalman clicks and collects there. Dojang trying to hold them off at the end of the game, but uh, they're just going to... Go for the throat here, and Team 2 comes away with uh, the dub in the end. It was a close back and forth that game. Both teams uh, finding angles. Team 3 finding a way back in that game when it was looking pretty dire in the end there. With uh, the Baron being taken by uh, Team 2. But we do have Team 2 taking it out in the end. Well played by, uh, by our Team 2 there. We did see it was almost the Chirp show for a little while there. Chirp showing his uh, Syndra mechanics off, but FTR coming back in um, in a deficit in that matchup and uh, getting a solo kill, which was pretty pivotal to the game where they were looking to really snowball things. Team 3 um, getting, uh, getting punished there with a little bit of cocky play and FTR with some fancy movement. Winning that 1v1 out there. It was pretty pivotal in the uh, grand scheme of things. As uh, from that point on, the snowball from Team 3 really stopped as uh, we saw Easy Smurf get a nice flank on the back iron there. Paranoid and Rusty, key in this game, won the early game matchup and really squashed a lot of the pressure that could have been put on by this uh, bot side of the map. Meant that they weren't able to dragon stack maybe as they would have liked to. Put this uh, mid jungle down into the bot side, roam around and create havoc and sort of take control of that map. That's probably what they would have liked to have done. But with the pressure exerted from Paranoid, from Rusty, they were able to really hold on to things here. But um, we did see nice showing from both teams there. All players really having some different key points in that game where they had some standout moments. And... Uh, and coming back into it, it was quite a, a throw, uh, sorry, a pull and tug. A little, a couple of throws here and there, but um, yeah, it was a pull and tug back and forth uh, for the most part. Teams finding advantages and finding ways back into the game once uh, it was looking a little bit dire. So it was nicely done in the end from Team 2 to take that away, pull the trigger at the end with uh, what was a better scaling comp in the end as well. But that will be it from us for uh, the Div 1 Trials. Thank you all for participating. If we have any of the players still watching, um, we appreciate you guys all joining in and hope you've enjoyed the tournament. Uh, we have now got all of our games finished, so the selection process will begin from here. We will be uh, having some feedback forms sent out to all the players uh, to fill in their opinions of the other players in the tournament. 
um, and we will be using those to uh, to advise our process. We will be aiming for unidiversity in the teams, but um, that won't be the be all end all. We will be using our discretion through the uh, through the coach's advice and through also the feedback forms as well as other elements, player history and player knowledge. So all those elements will transfer into Queensland side being selected that will eventually in two weeks face off against New South Wales and take down uh, their squads. As I have heard from some players, they are very keen to get some revenge on the uh, New South Wales players. There is some, there are some heated, uh, heated players there looking to, uh, to have their, um, have their vengeance from previous games and QUT into varsity and whatnot. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to XP Esports uh, for this production broadcasting these games for you today, and they will be the broadcaster of the games in uh, day two as well, in two weeks. So you'll be greeted again by me casting the tournament and uh, most likely some other casters maybe Carnaby from Griffith maybe some other casters as well we'll see um, and thank you also to Meta as well they uh, they are involved in this tournament as um, as being sort of uh, a partner as such the uh, officiators I've been told <laughs> but um, yeah thank you all for watching and uh, hope you guys have enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time in uh, day two of New South Wales vs Queensland State of Legends. See you all then. Decade XL Series has evolved alongside with gamers. To become your trusted partner, we strive to make every product detail perfect so that you can perform at your best. From one tournament to another, from winning a championship to the next one, we stand alongside with you. Esports means everything to me. It's given me a comfortable place where I can uh, kind of be myself, and that's been really important to me over the years. Winning the championship means a lot to me, especially when I see the best feeling in life. Winning a tournament is the most amazing thing. My first ever land that I won, I swear I couldn't shake that feeling of excitement and hype. When I win a tournament, it just feels like a lot of weight is taken on my shoulders. Zoe's impression of the is that it's a very important part of the team. Zoe is made for gamers. If given a chance, I would only use Zoe monitors and tournaments. The thing that I really like is the quality of the game, the quality of the game, the quality of the game. I believe that if anyone can use it, تدعم اللعب المحترف بشكل كبير بحيث السموث واللعب الجميل. I can't thank Zawi enough for giving us the resources that others may not have. 조이 기업가 이제 11주년이 됐는데 어떻게 축하드립니다. 시황 조이 계속 계속 보여주시 님의 품의 핵심 가치, 그리고也期待你们可以推出更多不同的产品.ในความเป็นโซวีในแบบของผมนะครับ. สำหรับผมแล้วโซวีไม่จำเป็นต้องพูดอะไรเยอะครับคุณภาพของเขาคือคำตอบครับ Thank you for listening to us all these years ที่เราเหาะแล้วที่เราเสิร์ฟเราเหมือนเสิร์ฟจะเป็นยูซีที่เราเหาะแล้วที่เราเสิร์ฟจะเป็นยูซีที่เราเหาะแล้วที่เรา